All right, today I'm going to show you guys how to modify your PS2 Fat or Slim. I'm going to be talking about the USB method, but I'll cover a few of the other methods, not in detail, but just kind of show you. So the first thing you want to do is get this OpenPL Manager. Uh, go to this website, get this latest version of OpenPL. This is the best tool to use. If you're using a USB, you want to do it this way. You also, if you're using a hard drive, you want to get the HBL Batch Pal if you're using a hard drive. So the hard drive would be this one. Don't worry, I'll put the links in the description below. There are a different method, but I'm just going to show you guys the hard drive method. So you're going to want to do is, I right now I inserted a USB drive right into my USB. Uh, you're going to want to set it to either a FAT32. You're going to need a different program that's over 32 gigs or XFAT. I'm going to use XFAT just because my uh, PL is already supported. I have the latest version of the FMBC bootable and mine supports this thing the older version does not support xfat but the newer version does so make sure you have the latest version the ones that come from aliexpress currently on amazon i'm pretty sure are the latest version so that should support xfat so what we're going to do is basically format the drive and this is our usb drive make sure you format your usb not a hard drive once it's formatted all you have to do is create the folder so i've already uh gone through that so we have uh, our DVD. This is my hard drive with all my games on it. I've already downloaded and moved the games to the correct directory. This is our USB drive that we just made. I'm going to open a new window. So what I recommend for people to do is uh, all you really have to do is you can make a new folder and just call it DVD. And I would just put all your game files in the DVD folder because that's what it's looking for. It's looking for a folder called DVD. And this is where you're going to put the ISOs for your PlayStation 2. For example, uh, I'm going to move a really small one. I've already converted. These are actually CD games and I've converted them. I'll show you how to do that. So let's say Marvel vs. Capcom 2. All I'm really doing is I'm copying the full ISO file to this USB drive. And... You're kind of wasting your money if you're getting like a really fast or slow USB. If you notice, it's it's not very fast because this is a USB 2.0. So it's going to take a little while to transfer over. Uh, like I said, so it's going to take a while to transfer over a lot of games. I'll go ahead and um, I'll move like two games just to show you guys. It's going to just be a longer of a video because I have to move it. So we'll do like, I don't know, um, just move the two smallest games I have. So these th uh, are actually CD games. And the next thing we'll do is why this is waiting to transfer. We'll go ahead and open up our uh, our OpenPL Manager, which is what I use to extract it. So we that you want to download the on your computer this OpenPL Manager. You're going to want to go ahead and run this as administrator. And then hit yes. That's why you can't see it. So you see that this is my old drive I set up before. I'm going to go ahead and refresh our list. And I'm actually going to go uh, change. So this is my old thing. It's it, This is actually my hard drive. I already have the hard drive set up. And I've already downloaded all the movies. This is off my hard drive. But now we're moving over to our USB drive. This is the E drive. So what you're going to do is you actually want to move our location. So we're going to go ahead and change the OpenPL folder. And this is where you, if you're doing a hard drive, you want to do a hard drive. We're just doing a normal ISO one. And we're going to change this to our E drive. See how this is our, our, our E drive? It's our USB E drive. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to our E drive and I'm going to save it. And then it says there's no artwork or folder. Do you want to, is this the correct folder? Would you like it to create? Just say yes. And then notice how the two games populated that we already transferred over. And then if you actually go back, it populates all the folders for you. So the artwork is going to go into your artwork folder. CDs go in the CD folder, etc. VMCs for your virtual uh, like saves and whatnot. So now you have the games already loaded over, which is which I, I recommend to rename them. Also, if the name's incorrect, you can hit a thing. Uh, you can actually use all these tools here where you can actually get the rename the file so it's not too long. Or you can get the game, manage the art editor. You can get the games. This all do like really cool stuff. What I recommend doing, though, is is like here. The best thing you could do is uh, it's under, where is it? It's get the artwork tools. You go to the game gallery and you can actually go ahead and, uh, not the game gallery. You can go, where is it? It's, there's a key to like get the art. I think it's manage art. There it is, manage art. So if you want to get the artwork for your stuff, you can decide what art you want to get. You want to get the front cover, the back cover. I usually just select everything and get it that way, but you can manually update stuff as well. And then if you add a game, for example, so if I go into, let's say you want to add another game, you know, I'll go ahead and add it from our hard drive. You can pretty much put all your games. This is only a 32 gig drive, so you're not going to be able to add a lot of games. So just note that. If you add a game, just refresh it and it will show up. So I'm going to add another uh, small game so it doesn't take forever to load. So say I want to add Jurassic Park. So again, I'm copying over Jurassic Park. So you're going to add just the .iso files. And I've already converted these. These are actually CDs, so you actually can use this tool here. 
and convert ISOs. This is really good if you have like a CD based game, like a bin and CU file. You can convert them as well. This has a lot of really cool uh, cool stuff to do. So I'm a big fan of it. And I'm trying to think. Yeah, it is. Art download. That's what it's called. So what we'll do is we'll transfer over the games and we'll download the artwork. So once this is done, it will be three games. So I just transferred another game over. Wait for it to finish. Boom. And if you notice, it doesn't show up. So what you want to do is go refresh list and you'll notice it will show up. Now we want to get the artwork. So now I click on artwork download and I want to download the cover, get the back cover, get the disc, all this stuff. But you notice, okay, this is our E drive. And if you go to art, there's nothing here. Watch when we run this, just hit start and it will pull everything off the internet for you. It's super easy. See how we just populated all this stuff? It populates the artwork automatically for you. Sometimes it doesn't pull the CD cover. Uh, I noticed, but you can manually update or do if you want. But this basically populates your art folder. And that's all you really have to do. This this drive now has three games and we'll load it off the CD-ROM drive. Like I said, we'll just go plug us in with our FMPC bootable device. Go to OpenPL. Make sure you turn USB device on. But this is the easiest way to add games with the manager. It's very simple. Uh, again, you're just going to set it up this way. Like I said, the artwork goes with the artwork automatically, and all your games are going to go into this DVD file. And you want to make sure that they're ISO format. So even if they're CDs, it, you can't put a folder called CDs. I wouldn't recommend doing that. I would just move all your stuff into an ISO. It's actually really easy. So you'll just uh, grab the files you want, and you'll convert them to ISO. So even though these are CD games, they're ISOs. And you can move all the games you want into the DVD folder, and everything will play off the DVD folder. That's the best way to do it. That's the that's the trick of the trade. And then once you're done moving all your games, get the artwork, and just plug it in and play it. It's really that simple to do. So if you're looking to modify your PS2, this USB method is by far one of the easiest things to do with the OPL Manager. Uh, make sure you're obviously playing games that you own and are backed up, and go from there. I'll go ahead and uh, show you me plugging this into the PlayStation and how it works. And that's actually going to be on my phone, so it's going to be a different uh, setting from my computer. But yeah, that's all you have to do. Simple as that. 3MC boot on how to get it to work with a USB drive. I have this very festive pink USB drive with the purple. And you can get these cards from AliExpress, or you can get it from Amazon, or you can make them yourself. It's really up to you. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and just uh, insert my USB as I use one fan, which is... I got to put my phone down, sorry. Ugh. We're putting the phone down. So I inserted the USB into the USB port on your PS2 Fat or Slim, and now we're going to back up. So this is a free MC boot, and if you notice, you can either use, this is the AliExpress one, it comes with the 10th anniversary, or you can scroll all the way down and also load this one. It's actually the latest version, it's not version 1.10. It doesn't really matter, I already, I already modified this, but I'm going to go ahead and load it. So now it's going to load off the free MC boot card. And this machine does have a hard drive, but I'm also going to show you the USB as well. So this is the video I'm going over is how to load it from USB. You're going to wait for it to load up. It's This is a, the APA drive. See how it says APA? This is the hard drive. So if you actually use your controller, you can scroll over to the left and USB will show up. And these are the games I just added in my video and I added the artwork. As you see, the USB works just fine. The USB does take a little longer to load but it is gonna load your games off a USB drive, so you absolutely can do this. Let me just kind of show you um, the settings to do this. So if you need to get the USB to work, you go here into settings, you're gonna press X on the settings, and you're actually gonna scroll all the way down here, check out the settings I have, you want the same settings I have. Go to where it says BDM device, you wanna hit X on the controller, and this is all you really need to do, is you have to go set your, I, uh, so the I link is your network, the MX ISOs for these MX ISOs, which you also could do as well. I have them here. So if you want to play off SD cards, you absolutely can. And then the USB obviously needs to be on as well. So this needs to be turned on. And once you turn those on in the settings, if you want your artwork to work in display settings, you go to display settings and you turn the artwork on and you save the settings. So make sure you save the settings on both. My TV's cut off, but it has an OK button here at the bottom on both settings. So after you make a change, make sure you're hitting this thing that says OK. It's going to be the settings and the display has OK settings. And then scroll all the way down and then hit Save Changes. Because that will actually save the changes to the MC1, which is this card right here. So anytime you make it, you change something, you want to save the card. And then you can hit O to go back. And now you have the menu. So this is the USB games. And this is the hard drive games. You can play even off the SMB. So what's really cool, let me show you. So if you also have an SMBC boot card... 
Notice you can also insert this into the memory card. This has a bunch of games as well set up. Watch the second I plug it in. It's going to turn on and detect. And notice it says USB here. And it says SMB, right? Well, so you what to do is you hit over arrow. And now it says MX4 ISO. And you notice it has different games on it. If I step back and you can actually see what I'm doing. So the cool thing is you have multiple ways of putting games on your, uh, your uh, basically your PS2. So let me just show you this video is about the USB. If you want to load a USB game, all you do is you press X over to the game. So Marvel vs. Capcom 2. The USB does take a little bit longer to load. So for example, this would be a PlayStation 2 logo. I have it currently disabled, so it seems like it's not doing anything. The USB is actually one of the slower ways to load a game on the P uh, PS2 because it's a 1.1 speed. It's actually slower than the disc even, and it's slower than the memory card and slower than the hard drive. So it takes a few more seconds to load, but it plays just as fine. So now we're playing off the USB right now, and you'll see the USB doing its thing, loading as well. And it's this very same game, you're just playing from the USB, it's the ISO file. So if you are getting a PlayStation 2, this is by far the easiest thing you can do. You literally get a USB, set it up how I showed you, and you can play all your favorite PS2 games that you legally own on this. And then when you're done playing, to exit out of the game, I, I need two hands for this, so you press the two top triggers, and the select button, and then with your other hand, you're going to press the two top triggers, L1 and L1, with the start. So it starts select, and all four, I mean, obviously you need two hands, and that will bring you back into the menu. I'm going to put my phone down really fast because I need two fingers to do it, but as you see, you can play games off the USB, which is really cool. So, so you press this together, it's going to actually boot you back into the menu, so... It's better than just shutting it down because you're basically running off the USB or flash memory. It's going to go back into the memory card. So what you do is you press O and press back here and then it will load FreeMC boot again. And you can either go back and load another game or you can turn your machine off. It's really up to you. It also does have an option to power your device off. So say you want to load, again, OpenPL. You can absolutely turn off your PlayStation as well from this menu. But this is going to allow you to have access to all the games. So every time you boot up, this is called like a soft mod. You're booting to the soft mod menu, you're loading the OpenPL Manager, and you're selecting the games you want to play. Again, this is off the hard drive. We press over. This is off that MXISO we just put in. And this is off our USB. And you can decide whatever way fit, floats your boat to play your games. And then when you're, you're done playing, you can hit start. And if you notice, it has a menu here. So I'd recommend to save all your stuff to not mess anything up. When you're done playing... Just go ahead and hit power off. So go to the power off and press X. And then it says your system will power off. Do you want to accept? Hit X and it will power off nicely and you won't mess anything up. So if you're doing this, make sure you're shutting down correctly. And like I said, you can buy these cards here from AliExpress. And this is a 64 megabyte. I think I paid like $4 for this. I honestly think for $4, just wait the two weeks and get this from AliExpress. Uh, it's easier. It, you can make these yourself. It's very easy. You just run a program. If you want to transfer a, a memory card, you can absolutely do that as well. But these are so dirt cheap and they work and they're very easy to update. There's a lot of videos on how to update to the latest version of OPL on this, but the version that comes with it has this already supported. So it's kind of a no brainer. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to help you out.